I have an interesting test that I'm planning to do here with this Pieta, which is a copy of an 1858 Remington. And that test is going to be to see how it shoots with uh, Lee 200 grain conicals compared to what it has done before in the past with these 451 uh, Lee cast round ball. I've had real good luck with this gun in the past shooting round ball. And here's a quick glance at the four targets that we shot a few days back. Uh, actually on the 13th. Today's the 29th, I think, or 28th. First target um, with the clean gun. And here's our number two target. Third target. And the fourth one. So with the five shot groups, we had a 5.65 total, or an average group size of 1.41 inches. And 21 yards, that is really good for that style gun, I feel. And if we use a six shot group, including everything, 8.35 and a 2.06, or so roughly a two inch group, 21 yards. For um, four targets, 24 shots. Okay, I have some serious doubts that we'll do even as well, much less better than that with our conicals. So what we'll do is we'll shoot these and we'll see if we're able to fill this section here in and come anywhere near that 1.41 or even the 2.06 group for, for six shots. And here's the bullets we're going to shoot. These are uh, cast from a Lee bullet mold and that number on there is uh, 450-200-1R. Diameter is 4.450 and a bullet weight of 200 grains. So we'll get some measurements off that bullet. I'm casting that um, from pure lead. That's again the Lee 200 grain. Base measurement will be right down in here. Measures 442. And the nose, we got a measurement of around 448. So about six thousandths more on the nose than on the, than on the base. And the driving band, the center section in here, I measured that at .448, same diameter as the nose. And getting some specs off from our Pieta, the 2011 manufacturer, of course 1858, and has a 1-30 twist. 8 inch barrel, bore diameter 440, and cylinder chambers come out to be around 444. So the chamber diameter is at 444. We're going to be sizing down that bullet some from the 448 drive band and 448 nose down to that 444. And actually with the 440 bore diameter and the base of the bullet being at um, 442, we get a little bit of help of stabilization from that base. We can't count on too much, only a thousandth or so, but it may help. Okay, with all those dimensions and things taken care of, the next step will be to load this gun up and see what it can do on the range. We're not planning to put any kind of lube inside these lube grooves. Don't want to use my sizer on it because I would compress or or take off this driving band. We're going to need that so our rifling can grab the, the projectile and we're going to lube in front of the bullet and that should take care of the uh, issue of getting our falling, keeping our falling soft. And we're going to shoot our 3F Go-X here at around 20 grains. This Lee 1.3 powder dipper that we've got here gives us about a 20 to 21 grain. We're going to start with that and see what that does. I've got a loading lever here, a loading device that I'll use to um, load the cylinders that I take out of the gun and it doesn't hurt to do a visual inspection there to see that we've got powder in all six of our chambers and it looks pretty even. Now with my loading device I'm not going to have this issue but some of the people that are trying to load on the um, with the cylinder in the gun you're going to find that that uh, bullet there is just a tad, tad long, but it will slide down into the cylinder. Okay, so now putting that bullet in there at an angle, I was able to get it um, past the loading lever and it'd be able to be seated. So it looks as though this operation could be done with that Lee 200 grain. And there's what our cylinder looks like once we've got those Lees pushed down in the chambers. and. I've got plenty of room up here front for, for lube. I could have probably put from 20, gone up from 20 to maybe 30 grains um, of the triple F if I'd have wanted to. And I'm not being real fussy as to how much lube I put on those things. Just 
well, enough to keep the falling soft in the barrel. I think with that oversized nose and the uh, driving band, we shouldn't have a problem with uh, chain fires. Plus, that lube is going to get blasted back into the into the cylinder, and it'll probably surround that, giving us um, added protection. Now we're capped up and ready for our first string. Something I'd like to mention that I kind of discovered a couple days back on on these guns, at least two of them that I've that I've checked. If you bring this hammer back really fast at first, and then kind of slow it up in this next region here, in other words, you don't follow through with that fast cock, it's okay if you use a slow one or probably a fast one, but if you do that fast at the beginning, that cylinder starts to rotate, the hand is giving it a shove, and what it'll actually do is kind of catch up and go past you, kind of like if you're a kid and you're pulling a sled down the hill and all of a sudden the sled starts to go faster than you're going, and what will happen is that cylinder is going to go around faster <clears throat> and before the bolt, because the bolt is going to come up when that hammer gets back in a certain position and before the bolt comes up that cylinder actually rotates so its grooves here are past the spot that the bolt will lock it in and you won't get a um, uh, gun that's properly set up to go. Well, this will be interesting. It's the first time I've tried something like this with the conicals. I've set that aiming dot just a little lower than usual, figuring that these things might shoot high. You know, I think that's really decent. I don't even want to shoot group two. And just in case anyone's wondering, yes, I do know enough to leave well enough alone, but we just got to know on this. My sighting ability is not going to allow for a real small group, that's for sure. I'm kind of thinking that out of the eight shots so far, this thing hasn't missed a beat. Okay, I think we got six down there, and that group size isn't looking bad either. And measuring that first six shot group, I'm getting 1.25, maybe 1.3, we'll say 1.3 for that, so we're going over here and put our six shot group down, measuring our second target, turns out there's a double up here, and looks like the extreme there. I'm getting maybe one point one point five on that. So second target one point one point five inches. Okay if we eliminate one of our farthest ones out I guess I would probably eliminate this one on that. And if I measure across here I'm getting a one inch group and that would go over here in the five shot area. And on this one, 
I've got a double up here, and what I'm going to do is eliminate this this bad boy down here. So I'm going to measure across here, and I'm getting right on the one inch mark. Okay, so that's going to be one inch. Okay, pretty easy to do the math on that. One or five shot group would measure one one inch. And we've got a 2.8 and dividing that by 2, 1.4 inch. After doing some of the math on here for the round ball, four targets, 2.06 for average on the six shot groups and 1.41 for the five shot group. We go to our conical, we had a 1.4 average and 1.0. Now we did shoot four targets up here and only two here so we decided to take our two best out of the four for the round ball and we did that we had an average of 1.92 so that made a little improvement on that and then for a five shot group we had a 1.41 and that drops to 1.32 of course we only had two targets with our conicals 1.4 for the six shot and one inch if we eliminate um, one off of each target, one inch for the five shot groups. So looking at these things, we're still saying that the conicals did a little better on this and like I say that's really comes as a surprise to me because I wasn't expecting they could probably even hold up to the round ball. Those conicals are shooting about four five inches above point of aim so we'll see how Mr. Cocan does if I aim a tad under him. Of course now the humidity went up and the sun angle is a little different. Got a slight breeze up there. Ah oh, hell just pull the trigger. Yeah, I think that worked. That one hit towards the top a little bit. I better go a little lower on this next shot. <laughs> Appears the cans are going to win. Got one shot left. That disgusting. Well, I thought I was hitting that one can towards the top, so I continued to shoot lower on the last three shots. But it turns out, looking at Mr. Mountain Dew here, that shot was right on the bottom, right about here. So we're not shooting as high as we thought. We're definitely in a coke can. And again, there's there's a point that it entered the can. So we'll load up one more shot. And see if we can get that can down there. I loaded this round up traditional and not take the cylinder out, so and that worked okay. We're not gonna hone quite so low this time and see if I can better luck. Yeah, that was the issue. Well, here's a close look at that last shot that we did on the can. I was holding it about Right about in here someplace on at that time where I was down down here on the three previous shots so to me that explains pretty much why that can was missed and those shots are pretty much dead center um, and about uh, inch and a half inch from the bottom of the can